and they became um, extremely violent and agitated. So I yelled out with everything that I had, Jesus, please save me. And he came to me and touched me and lifted me up and made me whole and filled me with his love and embraced me. Within minutes, Howard Storm was revived. And after surgery, he recovered. But his life was forever changed by what he believes he saw. This was like the portal of hell or the entrance to hell. People need to know that they are making their eternal destiny right now, today, at this moment. Now, last week, we looked at the existence of heaven and heard from a minister who said he'd actually been there. In this week's Beyond Belief, we meet a man who says he spent 23 minutes in hell. Do you ever think about the afterlife, or do you just live for the here and now? After you die, are you hoping you'll go to heaven, or are you afraid you may go to hell? Most world religions tell us there is life after death, and there are consequences for our actions here on this earth. The faithful are counting on going to heaven, a peaceful, joyful place where good people spend eternity with God. Heaven is said to be a reward for living a decent, honest life, and it's about salvation. Hell, on the other hand, is the realm of the devil. We are taught it is a terrifying abyss of inconceivable agony and despair where condemned souls are tortured by menacing demons and burn in an everlasting inferno without ever seeing God. The Bible tells us hell, or Hades, is the final destination for the unholy. Unless they repent, sinners like murderers, thieves, and liars will spend eternity paying the price for violating the laws of God. Now, atheists and agnostics don't believe that hell is a real place at all. Some say the notion of a bottomless pit of despair is just a deterrent invented by the clergy, an imaginary place of punishment used to keep people on the straight and narrow. But what if they are wrong? Many people who have had near-death experiences believe there is life after death and say for a brief moment they saw the gates of heaven. But it's rare that anyone says they've been to hell and back until now. Ten years ago, Bill Weiss was just an average church-going man. But he says that on November 23, 1998, he fell asleep and had a terrifying vision. Without warning, he was hurled out of bed and found himself in the middle of the most horrifying experience of his life. And I found myself falling through the air and landed in a prison cell in hell. It was so unbearably hot, far beyond the ability to sustain life. I wondered how could I be alive in this heat? You have to fight and gasp for any tiny bit of air, and this is how you breathe in hell. It's like... You don't have enough air. The odors in hell are so foul and putrid and disgusting. It's the smell of uh, burning sulfur and uh, an open sewer, uh, burning flesh, everything you can imagine that's terrible. I had absolutely no strength in my body. You're completely void of any kind of strength in hell. Any movement took tremendous effort. It's completely terrifying beyond any words I can ever paint a picture of. I noticed there were these two uh, creatures in the cell. I didn't realize what, realize what they were yet, but they were pacing and they had a hatred for God and for me. They weren't animal and they weren't human either. I don't know what they were, but uh, they were like large protruding jaw, huge teeth, claws. And the one grabbed me and picked me up and threw me into the wall. I felt bones break. The other one picked me up and dug claws into my chest. It had about foot-long claws, and I collapsed on the floor. They had no mercy whatsoever. I was taken out of the cell, and I was placed over next to this large pit of fire, raging flames, hundreds of feet in the air. And this is where I first saw people. There were people actually burning, literally burning in hell. It was not metaphorical or allegorical fire. It was real, literal fire. And the people were screaming. It was so loud and deafening to hear all these people scream and uh, the most awful sight I can't even really describe to you. There were all kinds of creatures around this uh, perimeter. 
uh, you know, deformed, twisted looking creatures. There were snakes and maggots and uh, creatures that were large, 12 and 13 feet tall and some small. Uh, everything had a distinct evilness about it. I wouldn't want to go back there for five seconds. If anybody could see it for just that amount of time, they would change real quick. The fear level in hell is so intense. It's so far beyond anything I can describe. I felt completely isolated, um, lonely, hopeless. There's no one going to come rescue you, no one to protect you. There's no Calvary coming over the hill to protect you. You're alone there. There's no angels, there's no God. Is is the most horrific thing anyone can ever imagine. You wouldn't want your worst enemy to end up in hell. Hell is a real place. You want to avoid it at all costs. A new Gallup poll found that more than two-thirds of Americans believe in hell, but they don't agree on where it is, what it means, or how you get there. Tonight, Bill Weir has some answers. He's here with us today. You've got this special hour-long report on 2020 tonight called Hell, the Fear, and the Fascination. And you talked to one guy who says he believes he's been to heaven and hell and come back? And he has, yeah. This is an ancient That's where Jesus spent three days after his crucifixion. And then there's Matthew DeVell, an Alaska man who says he went to heaven once and liked it so much, he killed himself to return. Each year, thousands of people report near-death experiences. Science has no real explanation, but the man you're about to meet needs none. He is convinced he has seen firsthand the glory of heaven and the horror of hell. I call myself a, a hostile witness <laughs> to heaven and hell. The first time he died, Matthew DeVal was 12, trying to swim the entire length of a pool underwater. But as he surfaced, his playful friends pushed him back under. I was completely out of uh, breath. The, the instant that I took the breath of water in, uh, a white light engulfed me, and I flashed back over my life. I was completely happy to be at this place, and I just wanted more. And out of the middle of the light uh, came an individual, just a beautiful creature, and it was uh, Jesus Christ. And he grabbed me by the wrist and said, you gotta go back. I'm instantly on the side of the pool, on my back, he had been rescued by his friends, but that glimpse into the afterlife left him confused and profoundly depressed. The next decade became a constant cycle of booze and cocaine-fueled binges, even after he married and had a daughter. I would drink till I blacked out and uh, found out the cocaine allowed me to drink more and stay awake and not black out. But the drugs and alcohol never came close to recreating that euphoric boyhood memory of heaven. So he came up with a most unlikely plan to return. I just said, I can't live like this another day. At that moment, I, I chose uh, to commit suicide. It was, like, it was like a joy came over me. It would be the answer to all my problems. And I get to go back to heaven. He bought his favorite gin and three bottles of sleeping pills, and then drove to a remote bird sanctuary near his home in Anchorage, Alaska. You, you swallow the pills one after another. Right. Three bottles. Right. You're drinking the gin. Right. You're in the your front seat of your car. Right. And I get a flash of light, and I'm suddenly outside. And I'm thinking, how the heck did I get out here? And I noticed that there's no, there's no color, everything's gray. And I put my head back, and the moment I close my eye, there's another flash. And I'm in mid-free